with you for the next couple of hours uh, to present to you this session all about the new computing curriculum and the ways in which I think it could link to uh, literacy, numeracy and science in particular. We'll probably touch on a couple of other ideas too, but probably with a focus on, on those first three. Um, as Graham said, please, please, please do get uh, involved in the session uh, as much as you possibly can. If you have any questions or comments, uh, any ideas to share from your own experiences, things you've done in your schools, then please, please, please feel free at any point to uh, type a message into the chat box in the bottom right of the screen. Uh, and I'll do my very best to acknowledge and respond to as many of those as I possibly can. There are a couple of points during the session that um, I've tried to build in uh, so that we can have a, a little bit of uh, discussion and dialogue between uh, each other. But if there's uh, a time outside of that that you feel uh, you've got something valuable to contribute or something uh, you need to ask, then by all means feel free to do that. Uh, and hopefully with your contributions and mine, we can have uh, a couple of quite productive and useful hours together. Um, just before we start properly, uh, the de contact details that you see uh, on the screen uh, are there for you to use if you feel that you need to get in touch with me after the session. So if you want to follow something up with me later, if you feel like you've forgotten a resource that I've talked about, then uh, they are the best ways to get in touch with me. Uh, and by all means, afterwards, I'll do, do anything I possibly can to uh, try and answer your questions should you have them once the session's over. Okay, uh, let's begin and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a nice old time. So to begin with, for those of you who don't know who I am, which will be uh, many of you, um, I've spotted Debbie from uh, a previous course. She came to a couple of weeks ago, so thank you for returning. Didn't put you off too much. Um, but for everybody else, probably, uh, this will be the first time you've uh, you've seen me present. Um, so I'm currently working uh, as an independent consultant, um, working with schools in primary and secondary, other um, institutions as well, but mainly primary and secondary schools. Um, and really my role is to support people in integrating technology uh, into their classrooms better than they're currently doing it. So it takes on a variety of roles. Uh, I spent some time this morning, for example, uh, coaching uh, a computing leader at a school, uh, which was really, really nice, working together to support them uh, directly. I do lots of team teaching with uh, teachers in classrooms. Um, I help people to plan uh, for the new computing curriculum, those kinds of things really. So. Uh, lots of you know really really interesting things. So hopefully um, I can bring to the table some some useful experiences from my current role. Uh, I also hold a part-time role as computing leader at a primary school in Bradford. And I think what that helps to do is make sure that the things that I'm talking to you about really are from the chalk face, if you like. Uh, I'm not talking to you about ideas and concepts that um, that are outdated. Um, these are things that I've I've done in my own classrooms. Uh, and not things that I, I've read in a book somewhere and you know because I haven't been in a classroom for 10 years like a lot of consultants have been um, that's not the case at all so hopefully um, I, I can add some value uh, to the session and just a bit of background uh, about the things that I've done previously uh, I've got an awful lot of experience in this kind of area working with lots of uh, different schools uh, in a variety of roles as ICT coordinator and head of ICT in a, at a school in Russia uh, and also worked as a local authority consultant in Bradford for uh, for a couple of years. So hopefully with all of the experiences that I've got, with all of the experiences you've got in your current roles, um, I'd be uh, it'd be very interesting to, to uh, share those ideas and hopefully move forward in some sort of way uh, throughout the course of the session. OK. Now, we'll start. I suppose we'll work through um, fairly chronologically. Um, I think that probably makes the most sense. Um, so we'll start with looking at what it says in the Key Stage 1 program of study for computing. Now I'm sure to many of you these statements are not necessarily new and that's a good thing. But I think it's worth spending a little bit of time trying to work out what it is we're trying to do and why we're trying to do it. And then we'll talk about ways in which uh, I, I suggest that that could potentially happen across a variety of subject areas. Now, the new computing curriculum is broken down into three core areas. They are areas of computer science, digital literacy, uh, which are probably the, the two biggest, most important, if not if not most important, maybe newest uh, areas for, for people to really, uh, to, to really think about. And then information technology is the third um, area, which I would suggest uh, a lot of people were slightly more comfortable with uh, previously. If you look at the weighting of, of this particular document, well, there's, there sort of isn't any guidance. And that's something that's, I think, caused a lot of people 
bits of stress and frustration and, and the odd problem because there is no suggestion as to what all of these bullet points should look like in terms of amounts of time, out, outcomes for, for children really. Now, this is just quite simply a list of bullet points. I mean, does it mean that if you've got, say for example, the second bullet point has only got five words in it, is that one significantly less important than the final bullet point that has an awful lot of words in it? Well, there's no guidance about that. So, you know, teachers and schools really do have to find their own path through this. And as long as all of the content is covered, um, then I suppose when visitors come and have the, the, the conversation, and by visitors I obviously mean inspecting bodies, um, then hopefully you should be in a position to argue that you're teaching the curriculum uh, properly, accurately, thoroughly, um, and, and shouldn't get yourself into too many too many problems. But let's try and work through bullet point by bullet point um, uh, and work out you know different ways in which we can uh, we can start to to do the vari variety of things that are necessary. If you look at the first, uh, let's say, three bullet points in the Key Stage 1 section, uh, they would all fall um, definitely into the computer science uh, area of the new uh, computing national curriculum. Um, if we look at then the using technology purposefully, and uh, that's, that's definitely a co uh, an information technology um, kind of strand, one of the, 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 the sort of traditional IT strands. Um, Final one about using technology safely in respect to these clearly digital literacy, uh, and I would suggest probably that the bullet point in between that uh, falls nicely in between the two digital literacy and IT strands. So clearly, the first three bullet points, in terms of the number of bullet points, uh, the computer science element massively outweighs the digital literacy uh, and the uh, the information technology strands. I don't necessarily think that that means that they should be receiving the majority of uh, your time and attention. Um, I think it's definitely true that for a lot of teachers these will be the things that are newest to them and therefore the things that they probably need to spend a little bit more time thinking about and getting their, their heads around. But if we focus on the fact that this is key stage one, in key stage one the computing outcomes are actually really really quite straightforward and for many schools will not be all that new. So let's try and break them down a little bit um, bullet point by bullet point and work out a few ways that we can uh, we can work uh, these through different subject areas as well as um, as, uh, as discrete computing lessons. Um, so first, why try and make this approach work in the first place? So cross-curricular learning is not a new thing by any stretch of the imagination. It comes around in cycles over sort of ten-year periods. I seem to find so. Uh, it's something we talked about a long time ago and it kind of fell out of uh, fashion a little bit throughout the, the 90s perhaps and, and now is certainly very much in vogue again. 